folks, welcome back to GridBase. I'm super excited because today we're gonna to be talking about my favorite radio mode of all time, which is APRS, the Automated Packet Reporting System. If you've watched me at all, you're aware that I'm an absolute APRS freak. And we're gonna be using two radios and three programs to do that. So don't feel like you're gonna to get too lost or anything like that. I'm gonna break it down for you real quick. And beyond the APRS stuff, we're also going to be looking at a uh, way to get air traffic information. So um, we can use Yak, which is one of the programs, to pipe in the information from a software-defined radio, which is a little dongle that you can plug in via USB. And we, we can take that program and we can take that dongle and very simply load up the information to start seeing the airplanes that are around us because they broadcast on a particular frequency and that frequency is what ADSB is. And so the cool thing is, is we can dial into that frequency and we can get their exact GPS location, their speed, their altitude, and all kinds of things. But that's a little bit of what we're gonna be doing in this video today. Today, I did talk about the fact that I was going to be using three programs and two radios. So I'm going to be using Direwolf, which is the back end. It processes all of the information for the front end clients to be able to extract that data into something that's workable for APRS. And so we're going to be using Direwolf on the back end, Yak on the front end just for the ADSB stuff, and then we're going to be using Exaster on the front end to be able to not only see the GPS locations that are being emitted from our APS in, uh, enabled radios, but also to send and receive messages back and forth from the base station to those radios. So the two radios I'm gonna be using today is the APRS enabled BTEC 6x2 Pro, and that radio has APRS and GPS all in one package. So you really don't need anything else if you're just using that radio. However, the other radio we're gonna be using is the Yaesu VX6R. The Yaesu VX6R is a regular analog radio. It natively has no APRS functionality whatsoever, but when we plug it in with Direwolf and with these other programs, it allows us to utilize those radio waves and uh, manipulate them to get APRS data, which is really, really cool. So I know that was a mouthful. The video is going to be quick and painless and uh, let's dive right in. All right, so we'll start off here with my surplus tool roll. It's still a little stiff. So I had a little trouble getting this guy out, but this is our sound card. This is what's going to allow the radio to communicate with the computer, and we need that. We also need a few cables here. Uh, this is just going to connect the sound card to the computer via USB and our audio cable for the Yaesu VX6R. We are also going to need a USB capable GPS. In this case, I'm using this VK162 one and our ADSB specific SDR dongle. It's nice because it eliminates all the frequencies we don't need and just gives us the ones we do need, which I think is 1090 and 978. This antenna is not ideal, but it will work for our demonstration today. So just throw that little rubber duck on there. And I also wanted to mention that you can use a MobiLink TNC instead of the DigiRig Mobile, but for today, we're not going to be needing it. So now that we've got everything set up and ready to go, we can power on our base station. So these are IP67 waterproof rated caps. Let's go ahead and get them off, plug it in, power it up, and bam, look at that beautiful machine. Now let's go ahead and get this waterproof cap off the top and put our FlightAware SDR dongle in there. Hook up the DigiRig to the computer and then hook up the radio to the DigiRig. Perfect like that. And I forgot actually that that uh, left USB port is currently configured for tethering with my iPhone. So if I, um, anyway, yeah. So for that reason, I had to use this splitter here to plug in the sound card and the GPS because I ran out of... Uh, ran out of USB slots, but that's okay, we were prepared for that. So, as you can see, we've got our radio, we've got our FlightAware SDR dongle, we've got the sound card, and um, we got the GPS, we're ready to go, baby. So let's move into Direwolf and get that going first, uh, since it's paramount to getting this whole APRS thing up and running. Now there is an application on the desktop to just launch, uh, I'm just used to working in command line, so this is easier for me, but as you can see at the bottom we have a GPS location fix, and that is really what we're looking for here. So now that we've got that going, we'll just go ahead and minimize it, and open Exaster. So now that we've got Exaster open, we can um, start to see something that makes sense to our eyes. So I'm going to take my radio here and send my location to Exaster, and you can see me pop up there on the bottom. Bing. There it is, perfect, everything's working. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take that radio and send a test message, so um, go in here and just send test. 
I did also uh, change the SSID from 15 to 10 on the base station. Um, so you'll see me enter, you know, K5JAK-10 here. Those last two numbers are important because it indicates what type of system you're running. So there we go. The base station received the message, and that's beautiful. And we'll just go ahead and confirm that we've received the message and wait for it to appear on the BTEC 6x2. Um, in order for that message to sync correctly, we got to make sure that it's on the right path, which is Y22Y11. So we'll just go ahead and use the default path, and that message should then make it over to our radio, and it absolutely has. There it is. So beautiful. That's exactly what we want. We just sent a text message on our own grid um, using our own equipment. So now I, I said I would show you the um, ADSB stuff. So here's an example. This is American Airlines Flight 1039. There's a heading. There's altitude. There's how long we've been seeing it, how fast it's going. Lots of information here. We can center it up, which will make it easier for us to um, locate it. And, um, you know, doing that, we can kind of query all of this information about this particular thing. So Anyway, that's the ADSB. Folks, thank you for watching. I intend to do more in-depth videos about APRS and about all the back end of all of this. Um, it could seem complicated, it could seem easy. The truth is, is that it lies somewhere in the middle, right? It's not really this like dragons and demons inside of, you know, radios type thing. It's all very, easy to do but there is you know some steps you have to follow and some protocol to get everything set up right and that's one of the benefits of the base station is that all of those kinds of things are pre-set up for you so it's a turnkey solution to be able to have some of these features and some of this functionality um, right out of the box so um, just part of the reason why I wanted to showcase it you know but you're more than capable of doing this kind of thing with open source software and other programs you know by no means is the base station the only option for being able to do APRS or ADSB SDR stuff, right? So this is just a video about how the base station does it, how I utilize it for that particular feature. And um, if you would like me to do more videos on this type of thing, please let me know. I can go into more depth or maybe I can break it down and make it a little easier, whatever. whatever. I, you know, I don't know what you want, so you gotta let me know. So you gotta like and subscribe so that you know whenever I post a video, and then you have to leave a comment below to provide your input to help me figure out what to make videos for, right? So I really appreciate you being here and taking a look at this video. If you have more questions, hit me up at gridbase.net or on my Instagram page, which is gridbase.net, all spelt out, D-O-T-N-E-T. -E this is Jake with Gridbase. Thank you for watching.